WordPress, the most popular website builder out there. Nearly half of the internet is built with WordPress, but a lot of those WordPress sites are vulnerable and they end up getting hacked. Not really due to any flaws with WordPress or with PHP itself, but mostly it's because there's a lot of unskilled people out there building sites with WordPress without reading any of its documentation, without any prior development experience, or if they do decide to do some research into WordPress security, instead of reading official documentation, they oftentimes stumble upon these half-rate security blog sites that will either straight up have misleading information or they just don't explain what the different security techniques do. And they'll have security through obscurity thrown in with actual core security techniques. So today I wanna to walk you through some bulletproof WordPress security techniques to secure your WordPress login page. And a lot of these security techniques are actually just general website security techniques that will apply to any other framework that's out there that has a login page. So the most obvious way to secure something like this would be to use a good password, right? But the thing is, human beings are not very good at making good passwords. So we're going to let that be done by a password manager to create good passwords instead of us doing something like combining the name of the street we grew up on with the name of our first pet. Now I recommend everyone use password managers, but I especially recommend them to people who are going to be administering websites because if you're going to set up WordPress from scratch or any other software stack from scratch, then there's several different accounts and several different credentials that are involved. Like you've got the backend user, uh, you've got the database user, the database credentials. You've got the SSH keys or the password for the SSH keys, which is how you should be securing your SSH connection. You're going to have the WordPress admin. So this is going to be the account that you log in with here. Uh, and then you might also have passwords for different email accounts. Like you might have an email that's used for when people need to reset their login. You might have another email that's used for when people buy products to help them with tracking, so on and so forth. And I can guarantee that if you aren't using a password manager for a setup like this, then you're going to be using the same passwords over and over again for those different accounts or you're just gonna be using a simple permutation of a password that probably wasn't very good to begin with. Now, one thing I really like about XC is they don't just give you an arbitrary measurement of password complexity, but they actually tell you how many bits of entropy a password is. So this is a more realistic measurement of how strong it is. Uh, and by default, this is how it generates your passwords, 20 characters, and it uses upper and lower alphanumerics as well as symbols. Uh, so really good defaults, just had to point that out because you guys know how much I like defaults. At least this is how it is on Ubuntu. I don't know if other distros, maybe they have weaker or stronger defaults, um, but Typically, with this kind of setup, you're going to get 100 bits or more of entropy. Uh, sometimes, you know, kind of rarely, it'll be a little bit less. And to give you an idea of how secure this is, this is basically like you could put a supercomputer to work trying to break a password like this, and it's going to take the lifetime of the universe. So if you set something like that, you're pretty good for having this login be secure. Now, some people will tell you that you also shouldn't use a username like admin, that that's not secure and that you should use some obscure username instead, but that's more security through obscurity. Weird usernames are not a security technique. Just make sure that the password is good. Uh, but what we could do to make this login portal a little bit more secure is we could set up two-factor authentication. That way, even if our username and our password were to get leaked somehow, we would still have that code protecting us. And ideally it's on another device so that even if our computer gets hacked, we've got that two-factor on our phone or something like that. Uh, now for two-factor, you are gonna have to install some kind of plugin to handle it. Personally, I'm using WordFence because it has two-factor bundled in with their firewall and their malware scanner, which you're probably gonna want for your site. In fact, a lot of managed hosts 
will actually pre-install WordFence. This is the one that Volter uses uh, for like its one-click WordPress and one-click uh, WooCommerce, or some other managed host will use a similar plugin that's called Jetpack for that extra security. Um, but anyway, if we go to the login security under WordFence, this is where you would go ahead and scan this QR code with your Authenticator app. Personally, I use Aegis. And then this is going to generate that uh, six digit code, I think like every minute or so. And then of course you should also download your recovery codes. Now, while we're still inside of WordFence, we can go to our firewall and we can go to, I think it's rate limiting. And here, we can make that login page more secure by limiting how many failures somebody can do in a certain amount of time. So by default, after 20 failed attempts, and this will also apply to you if you're trying to log in, uh, or other people, if you're gonna let other people have user accounts on uh, your WordPress site, like to leave comments or whatever, then if they fail logging in 20 times, then they're going to be, um, basically locked out, like they're not gonna be able to log back in again for four hours. So to recap, our password would take billions of years to crack, and that's if it wasn't rate limited, but now you're gonna get locked out for four hours every 20 attempts or so. And I've got two-factor set up with an authenticator app, so my WP login is pretty much bulletproof at this point, but we can actually take the security further by preventing would-be attackers from ever accessing this page in the first place. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, the method that I see most security blogs talking about pretty much involves changing the name of the WP login page either uh, by doing it directly or through using a plugin and the one that most of them recommend is WPS hide login. Uh, so the way that this works, if we go to settings, WPS hide login, uh, is just right in here, you put in whatever you want that page to be. By default, it's gonna be login. Uh, so now, if I do a hard refresh of this page, you see at 404s, it's like, hey, we have no idea what WP login is, but if I go to login, uh, it'll probably log me in automatically. Yeah, but let, let me go to log out and then, um, now you can see how it's supposed to look. So you just go to that login page instead and it's gonna present you uh, with the page to log in. Now the thing is, renaming this page or redirecting it from another name with this plugin is really just security through obscurity because an attacker could scan every directory on your site and that's actually a pretty common step in penetration testing to uh, here, let me log in real quick. Uh, that's a pretty common thing is to just scan all the directories of your site using a program like GoBuster, uh, and it can enumerate websites pretty quickly. Now, there are a couple of methods for slowing down that enumeration. Uh, for example, you could use firewalls like WordFence, uh, or you could use fail to ban. You don't have to use a, a firewall like this. You could use a backend one. Uh, and if we go to rate limiting, I don't think it does any by default. Yeah, so you could set this up here, um, like if a human's page is not found, because that's basically what you would be looking for and this is what that scanning would look like. You would just be seeing a whole bunch of uh, HTTP responses for pages that don't exist. So, you know, you could set that where, let's say if somebody exceeds 960 per minute, then we're gonna throttle them that's probably a pretty good setting to put. But of course, this is gonna be on a per IP basis, so who knows, you might be dealing with an attacker that's got a whole bunch of IP addresses at their disposal, and then they figure out that the limit is 960 per minute, so they just set up a script to switch IPs every time they hit that. Uh, so a more creative method of uh, dealing with this, of dealing with someone trying to scan your uh, for that page is to just make it something that's not gonna appear in any word list, you know, something that they can't brute force. Uh, basically make it something sort of like a password. So why don't we just copy this one that we have here 
and put in something like that. So I think this is like 32 characters. Uh, alphanumeric, of course, you don't want to put symbols in here. Um, and yeah, that's something that they're never going to be able to guess. So we can save our changes. Now, in order to access the login page, let's see, if I refresh, yeah, it tells me that one's not valid. We got to go here now. And it logs me in automatically, but I can just log out and boom. So obviously, if you're going to rename your login page to something crazy like this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you bookmark this page or better yet, you could just copy the full URL and of course yours wouldn't be localhost, it would be something.com and put that into your WordPress admins uh, on the URL. So put it in right here and then you can easily copy it from XC when you're going to log in. But like I said, there is another method to block access to this page and it's actually more effective than just changing the name to something else and that is to restrict its access to a specific IP address. And that's actually a really common security technique in enterprise environments for important systems. Like if you've ever worked at a place that required you to connect to a VPN in order to access something, even when you were inside the office building using their Wi-Fi, it's probably because that resource was only allowing access from a VPN IP. So of course to do this, you're gonna need a VPN and not Nord VPN, Express VPN, or any of those ones that you see advertised everywhere, you're going to want a private VPN server that has a static IP address. And luckily, most VPN software is very lightweight. I actually did a video showing you how to set up WireGuard VPN on the cheapest VPS host that Volter gives you, which I think is like $5 a month. Um, so you could use that or you could use OpenVPN that's also relatively lightweight. Uh, so you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money per month on that VPS. And then once you've got your VPN set up and you've got the IP address for it, you want to then go into the back end of the box that's running your WordPress site. And you're going to want to add a rule to your web server configuration. If you're running Apache, then you're gonna be editing this HTA access file in your WordPress root directory. And if you're running Nginx, then you're gonna be editing nginx.conf. Uh, and the syntax for Apache is gonna look a little bit like this. So basically inside of this files context here, you want to put that directory that you want to restrict access to, uh, which of course is gonna be wplogin.php by default, because you can actually combine this with the page renaming as well. You just wanna make sure that instead of wplogin, you copy this instead. Uh, so let's do that. And here is where you're gonna put the IP address for your VPN. Um, I'm on localhost, so I mean, there's no reason to VPN it anyway. I'm just gonna put this 6969 so that it's gonna fail. And um, right quit. And I don't think you need to restart Apache, but you do have to restart if it's Nginx. And this is the page that you're gonna get. So you'll get forbidden. Um, you could also make it point to a custom page if you wanted to. Uh, like you can make it go 404 if you want. Uh, so yeah, whatever the poor schmuck is that's gonna try to hack your page now, he's gonna have to hack into your VPN. And that's gonna be pretty difficult to do because they're not even gonna know what your IP for that VPN is. That VPN is not gonna be public information, at least it shouldn't be. Uh, so, I don't know, they'll have to social engineer one of your employees to figure out what the VPN's IP is. They'll have to try to hack into that. Uh, then they're gonna have to figure out what the directory is for WordPress login. And then they're gonna have to spend the age of the universe brute forcing the password. And then they still have the authenticator app to deal with. Yeah, I think it's pretty much safe to say that this WordPress login is secured. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to leave a like and share this video to hack the algorithm. And let me know in the comments below if there's any other security techniques that you use to secure your login pages that I didn't mention here. Have a great rest of your day.